right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Philosophy of Fitness podcast, episode number 12. My name is Haley. I'm going to be your host today and every single day that you are tuning in. Today, I am joined by the lovely Max Feta. Welcome. Welcome. What's up? How's it going? What's up? Good. It's been like forever since I've spoken to you. Oh, I can't even think of the last time. It's been a very long time. It's always great to see you, catch up, and I'm super excited for this. Yeah, and I'm so excited to have you on. And before we even get into anything, I have to ask, because I know that you said that you tested positive for the 2020 illness. I don't want to say the name of it because I feel like YouTube's going to freak out if I say it. But the 2020 illness, we all know what it is. So what was up with that? Like, how do you feel now? I feel great now. It was like a month ago, and I had a head cold. I was congested. I then I, so what happened was I had the head cold and I was congested and then I didn't think it was anything but I wasn't leaving my house then I lost my taste and I lost smell so then I was like probably should get tested got tested tested positive but besides the head cold and not being able to taste I didn't have any uh severe symptoms no coughing nothing wow. in my chest. so you know knock on wood thank god I got lucky I guess but you know it was it was kind of scary for a day or two and thank God I'm perfectly fine now back to normal yeah that is that's so crazy to me how I'm reading up always how people have different symptoms of it so I was reading this article some girl said she couldn't smell her shampoo in the shower but like nothing else was wrong with her it's crazy but I'm glad that you're you're doing well now so I appreciate it yeah it was scary for a minute but I don't know I just I worked out a lot, honestly, right, right when I got diagnosed, I went for a walk and went for a run. And I just figured the best thing I can do is get, I don't know, my lungs work. And I just figured maybe that yeah. would help. And I think it kind of did. And then I just, about a week or so later, I was back to normal. I had no head cold, no sweating, nothing. So got lucky. Wow. Very lucky. I feel like now too, if anything's wrong, it's like you sneeze, you're like, oh my God, I have it. Like, freaking out. I know that I am too, even though I've, I've literally been nowhere. Like I still live at home. So my mom does the food shopping and stuff. And I haven't really been out of the house that much at all for, you know, aside from a couple things. So I'm like very low exposure. And even if I go outside or I hear somebody like sneezing at the beach or they're coughing, I'm like, Oh, better stay away. They probably have it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, I, I really tried my best to stay in and not go out to so, and I, I always do social distance and thank God, as far as I can see, I don't think I got, I gave anyone COVID. Everyone I was around tested. They all tested negative. And I was wearing a mask and stuff and I still do. So it's crazy. It's scary. It's bizarre. And you know, just crazy part of life. It is a crazy part of life. And it's so bizarre that this is the new normal now, because this is probably going to be the way things are for, for quite some time. So I know I hate it, but yeah, probably. Yeah. You're probably right. It sucks, but I just need to be happy and grateful that I'm okay. So yeah, you're for sure right though. I don't know. I don't know when it's gonna go back to normal. I don't know when the gyms are going to open back up. I don't, there's just no way to know, you know? Yeah. Nobody has a crystal ball, unfortunately, to predict what's going to be happening. But as of right now, in my opinion, I feel like we're probably going to have a second wave. Creeping yeah, up, for sure. You know, hundred percent. Half people are sick of it. Half the people, you know, so it's like, it's yeah. going to keep spreading. It doesn't, I don't know how they're going to possibly get like a cure or a vaccine or something in the next couple of months, it's best probably going to take six to 12 months, maybe even more. And it's just, yeah, it's probably, we're sure going to get a second wave. We're probably going to go back on lockdown again. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. Hopefully the deaths and stuff can just keep going down. I don't even know. It's just, it's a crazy, scary thing. One of my older friends, his friend, who was like 65, he's an older guy, he got it and he couldn't breathe. He was really tight in his chest and and wow. he ended up going to the hospital though, and he got like a blood transfusion and uh, he ended up being perfectly fine. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know, you know? Yeah, nobody knows and it affects everyone differently too because they even say now that children aren't as susceptible to it or shouldn't be as susceptible, but also I feel like nobody really even knows enough about it to even make that call at this point, so. Yeah, I know, that's why I hate even come. I don't even know if I am one of the very few that didn't get symptoms. I, You know, I just don't even there's just no way to know you know and I yeah. think hopefully in a few years we'll look back and hope to god it's you know just i don't even know i only can hope it gets better but you just don't know what's gonna happen it's crazy it's and it's scary and it's just weird weird world we're living in it's the only thing i can say such a weird world i think about it sometimes i'm like if you told me a year ago what was going on right now i'd be like there is no way you're insane you're crazy i would never believe it people think you're out of your mind it's crazy 
But here we are. Uh, we do the best we can. So I'm just I'm glad that you're feeling fine, that you got through it and that you're doing well. So, yeah. So what have you been up to now? I, you were just on Married at First Sight as a commentator, yeah, uh, right? That's pretty cool. That was a blast. Yeah, that was just uh, I'm just I'm doing, you know, a lot of stuff with YouTube and I have, you know, my other business that I'm working a lot on. And then the Married at First Sight thing just came up, which was a blast. And that was super fun and awesome. And and so, yeah, I'm just making some different videos, making new content. And then I'm also working on my marketing business. And that is about it. I'm also, you know, managing blood sugar, working. That's a, you know, full-time 24-7 job that's going to be with me until the day I die, probably. But those are just the, the three things. I work on YouTube, work on the marketing business, and then managing my health. Yeah, that's that's the little holy trinity there. But it's awesome because it's all stuff that you can you can do from home now, especially with everything being shut down, which is really cool. Yeah, and that, that's one thing where it's I got lucky. Everything I work on, you know, knock on wood at the moment, it's all online. It's all from home. And so this co or this sorry, gotta, um, <laughs> it's okay. But this stuff that's going on in the world right now, it doesn't, you know, affect me, thank God. But yeah, so you know, just doing a lot with YouTube. I'm trying to get the podcast going. It's cool seeing you do this. I, I don't do podcasting consistent enough, but I really am trying to like get in a consistent order with it. Oh, really? Do you, do you have it up now or you're just like thinking about it? Podcast. I started it in like January, I think. And I, I, I mean to post weekly. I just, I just don't, I don't even know. Something about being on camera and doing like stuff like this, I love but for me, the podcast is just me talking. I haven't really tried to get many guests. I've got a couple guests, but not a ton. And it's just, it's so hard for me to sit there and talk for like 30 or 40 minutes by myself. And so I just, I just, I can't get in a consistent flow. I'm working really hard on every Saturday night. I'm going to start, you know, recording it, then I'll edit it. And then on Monday I'll post it. So that's my schedule I've been trying to shoot for. And I've actually been able to kind of get it the past couple of weeks. So I'm hoping I can keep it going, but for me, it's just been YouTube has just been so much fun. Yeah, you've been like on your YouTube grind. So what made you want to start your whole commentary channel? I, you know, last summer I was just going through life. Business was okay. It wasn't great. And my health was average because it was like June and July last summer. And in December before then, um, I got diagnosed with diabetes. So my health, everything was just kind of a blur. It wasn't anything fantastic. And I just missed having fun. And the, you know, one of the, I guess the best thing I've ever done in my entire life, it sounds kind of weird, but when I was in high school, I took a broadcasting class and I loved it. I thought it was fun. I had had a great time and I wanted to get something similar to that. And I also always loved reality TV for some reason. So I just thought of piecing the two together and I started making random videos on YouTube and they slowly just started to kind of pick up an audience. And, uh, and then, you know, I slowly started to kind of make money from the YouTube and now it's like, you know, half of my income kind of. So I just, it started as a hobby. And the crazy thing is like, it still is a hobby. That's why it's almost like too hard to believe because there has never been one time when I've done anything with YouTube that I haven't just had like a fantastic time. Whereas like my other business, there's always ups and downs and it's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So it's like a constant balance, but YouTube, it's always just like, you know, not even like work. So it's just the craziest thing, but it started as a hobby and still is kind of a hobby. Yeah, that's awesome. And I feel like, at least for me too, reality TV is such a guilty pleasure thing that everybody loves. Like I love 90 day fiance. Oh my gosh. Like all that stuff. It's just so fun to watch. And it's also really fun to watch someone kind of give you the inside scoop about what's going on and, and give their perspective on it. So that's awesome that you kind of also have the, the combination of a hobby as like what you're doing too, which is really cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, I couldn't have been luckier for get you know, having that YouTube thing, you know, being able to do it and start it and, and get the followers that I've gotten. And they're, they've they all, you know, like 99% of them are just amazingly awesome people. I try to keep in touch with as many of them as I can on Instagram and everything. It's cool. It's just like, it's just, it's really fun. We all love reality TV. We all can talk and gossip. And it is just, I mean, it's really changed my life for the better starting that YouTube channel. It's been just from the people I've met and the stuff I've been able to do. It's so much fun. And it's just, um you know, it's, it's the blessing really. Yeah, that's awesome all around. And that's what I'm trying to do with this too. I mean, I'm so new to the game of 
making content and posting videos, but it's so fun. And it's, it's something that I just want to like share with everyone. And, you know, I'm trying to upload pretty regularly, as you were saying with like your podcast, you want to kind of like stay on a schedule. Um, that's what I've been doing too, with, you know, just trying to be consistent with it and having guests come on and having a mix, but it is hard to just sit and talk by yourself. I'll say that. Like if you don't have like a topic ready to go, it's, it's kind of awkward at first, but it's fun. It's yeah. definitely a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, it, it, for me, when I first started, I was like really, 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 really nervous before I posted my first video. Then after I got over that, then I just, no, I didn't even really care anymore because I just figured this is who I am. My close friends know that I love doing videos and I love reality TV. And if other people think it's weird or stupid or anything else, they probably aren't even that really good of friends with me. And, you know, it's like they're not really my true full supporters and they don't, you know, they don't want what's best for me. So I, it was, I was nervous at first. Then after I kind of started to do it, I just, it just feels so right. It's like you hear people talking about finding your passion and I hate to say it, but like with this YouTube stuff and doing videos, I really just feel like I'm like perfectly aligned with what I want to do with my life. So I just, uh, it's like a high that I can't even explain. It's just like the, you know, it just feels great. Can't even explain that. Yeah, I love hearing that. I love when people are fully tapping into their passion and purpose and can combine the two. And the fact that you can make a living off of it is like so cool. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great world that we live in. Like, you know, so many of my older relatives always say it used to be so much easier to make money in the 70s and the 80s and whatnot. But I mean, I think like right now is the best time to, you can make money online. You can make money doing something you love. You don't have to be some huge celebrity to, you know, post on YouTube and get a following or on, you know, podcasts. And so it's just, it's a great time for people our age or even older too, to try something that they, that they love, that they want, you know, that they might want to try to do because you never know it could take off and it could, you know, be turned to a career. Yeah, that's so true. And I thinking about it, like, Back in the old days, only limited people had access to getting their voice heard somewhere. So you'd have to be connected through like a network or something. But now with platforms like YouTube, podcasts, everyone has the ability to do it. You sign up for free. You make a YouTube account. You post your videos up. Everybody can do that. Everybody with an internet connection. That's why I love what you're doing so much. I, I, anyone that tries to post anything on any social media and they just post and post and post. I just I love it because it's like it's like if everyone, you know, so many people say that they want to try to post on YouTube and this and that, but like half a percent of people actually do what you're doing and they actually take action and do it. And it's so awesome to see, you know, you do it and people actually try to make it on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or whatever, because so many people want to do it, but no one, you know, a small percentage of people actually ever go and post and, you know, try to make something of it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I think part of it too is something that, that I realized is that, I was always kind of just waiting for a right time with this stuff. I would say, oh, well, if I just had this, if I were to just, you know, get to this point or whatever, then I'll be ready to do it. But I think the thing is, there's never going to be a right time. You kind of just have to go for it. And it's not even so much like dipping your little pinky toe in the water. It's kind of just throwing yourself into the mix. And that really has been my experience with this. And I've been loving every moment of it so far. So that would be my advice is to just like take the plunge, go for it. 100%. I know. I know. And there's just some people you can't get it through their head, but it's just like, just do it because <laughs> all you got to do is nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to worry about. Just do it. And it could literally change your life forever. So, you know, it's, it's a great time to be alive. Great time to you try to start a business, even though, you know, with everything going on in the world, it might not seem like it, but in the online space, it's a fantastic time to try to start something, try to do something. Yeah, I love that positive approach too. But you're so right. This is the time for anything online, whatever you're trying to do. If you can, you know, get your content ready to go and get a little package together of whatever it is that, that you want to share with the world, this is the time to do it because everyone's at home. Everyone's on their computer, you know. I know. And I hate to say it because everything that's going on in the world has been horrible. We've lost so many people. It's been a terrible yeah. time. However, if we want to look at the positive side, my views on YouTube have skyrocketed since everything going on in the world. And I just totally 100%, you know, blame it on the fact that everyone's been at home. Everyone is just watching the phone. They're watching YouTube. And so it's like, they're looking for content to watch. So if you do want to become a content creator, now is the time to start for sure. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally a thousand percent. 
Would you have any tips for anyone if they were, you know, just starting out, if they're scared of taking that leap? Do it. I would just, that's my advice. Do it. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you got. It doesn't matter the editing. It doesn't matter if you're nervous, just do it. That's the only piece of advice I got. Every once in a while, I'll go back to my old videos and they were filmed on my iPhone. I was so awkward. The editing was God awful. The volume, <laughs> the audio was bad. The lighting was bad. They didn't get many views. Even some of my videos today still don't get that many views. You just, you can't let it phase you. Just post. If you like what you're talking about, eventually with time, a following, I can almost guarantee you will come. And so my advice is don't even think about anything. If you like what you're talking about, just post and keep posting. Try to do collaborations. That, that's another, you know, big thing. Try to find trends. You know, you got, you got to, you got, there, there's a scientific process to growing on social media too. It's not just, you know, following your passion. It's like you do have to know you know the different things and how to get people to click on your videos and how to get people to continue to watch and that kind of stuff but at the beginning the only thing that matters is that you just start posting and that you continue to post on a somewhat regular basis yeah i think that's some fire advice in the words of shia labeouf just do it you know <laughs> yeah so I've always known you to be very driven, very successful. So you have an interesting background. You're actually on Shark Tank. So I never really, I don't think I ever heard the full story of this. So what, how did that even come to be? I, it's kind of a funny story. When I was 15, I invented this phone case called the Erase Case. You could draw on it, design on it. It was nothing too terribly cool. But because of social media influencers back in like 2012, like the Logan Pauls of the world and people like that, they had huge followings and I was paying them a extremely small amount of money to promote my product to their following. And because it was like 2012, 2013, the whole influencer game wasn't really as big as it is now. And they were just charging like not much money. So I would, you know, I was working with like Logan Paul and, and people like that. And I was getting a crazy amount of traffic for this phone case product that I was selling. And it just, it took on a life of its own when I was in high school. And then when I was 16, the people from Shark Tank reached out to me to, uh, to go on the show. And so I went, you know, spent months with the producers going back and forth on my pitch and this and that. And I thought I had it down and I flew out to California with my family and I did the pitch, you know, to all the sharks and everyone. And, and I just told, you know, looking back on it, I just completely, totally, absolutely flopped. And it was just Aww. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I probably didn't do too bad because most people, not most, but some people, they go on Shark Tank and it's nerve wracking, it's scary, and they don't do a fantastic job. I did a mediocre job, but, you know, I just, I could have done better. And then so they film like however many segments, like let's say they film like 50 segments, but they only air like 45. And so mine ended up being one of the five segments that they don't, that they didn't end up airing that season. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. I was devastated. I was on the commercial. So that's my only, you know, plan okay. with that. but I was devastated. I mean, I really thought that was going to be my big, you know, shot to make yeah. it. Big. And, but everything happens for a reason. And I really think it was kind of actually a blessing in disguise in some ways, but it was an awesome experience. It totally boosted my confidence and I wouldn't change a thing, honestly. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, it kind of reminds me, I don't, I'd say sometimes to some people listening uh, that I was on American Idol season 13 and kind of like you, they didn't show me singing at all. And I was so upset. I, they showed me in a commercial like you for like seven seconds, they showed me running around. I never uh, even knew that. Honestly, I'd never heard that. Really? Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. It was in uh, 2013. So it was actually kind of around the time you were on Shark Tank, what which month is crazy. Was it? Mine was 2013. Mine, mine was December. Okay. Mine was June of, tw yeah, 20. Yeah, it was 2013. Wow. That's so crazy. Yeah. So what happened? So you filmed it and they just said, the email just said it, they weren't going to air it. They just never aired it. So, so they did a different process. So they, you know, filmed everyone in Hollywood week. And that year, just my luck, they did a, um, an additional round in an empty plane hangar. It was an abandoned plane hangar. They brought the 200 of us who made it to Hollywood week there. And only 40 of us had to sing. And the rest of the people, they were good to go for the next round. They were like, you're good to go. You made it. You don't even have to sing. 
And so the rest of us, they split onto two buses and they said, 20 of you on this bus, 20 of you on the other one. And they told us, you're not going to know where the bus is going until it arrives at the destination. It's either going to be at the airport to send you home or the next um, hotel, whatever. So that was like brutal. I There were grown men crying on the phone with their parents on the, my bus because I could tell that I was on the no-go bus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And I thought that they were going to show me at least in, in some little part. And it, you just, it was editor's choice, I guess, because they slice it how they want. And yeah, they didn't show me at all. <laughs> so did you get to meet Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, I got to meet, uh, Ryan Seacrest, JLo, Keith Urban, Harry Connick Jr. What, what, was, uh, what was Seacrest like? He was cool. He's short. He's like maybe, yeah, he's maybe like five, seven ish, but he was pretty cool. Uh, JLo actually crazy story about her. So she had a contract, I guess, with her producers that they weren't allowed to make eye contact with her. So yeah, I don't, it was like kind of a diva thing. And then anytime she had to go to the bathroom, they had to cl clear like a 10 foot radius and the security guards had to stand at the door and say, JLo's going to the bathroom. Everybody stay away. And yeah, one of the cameramen told me about it and I was like, Whoa, she was, I mean, she was nice to me. Like she was very nice to me, but I guess Maybe backstage, not so much, but yeah, dang, yeah. I, you know, I just I had a really similar experience. It was a blast. I it boosted my confidence a ton. I was also devastated after it didn't air, but like I really do from the bottom of my heart think everything happens for a reason, and I could just like totally think that happened for a reason. But at the time, and for a couple years after, I was completely devastated. Yeah, I t I totally feel that because I was in the same boat. I was so upset, so upset. But in hindsight, I, I feel the same way. I do feel like everything happens for a reason. And every little setback, if you want to call it a setback, or just kind of a bump in a road takes you in the direction that you're meant to be because... 100%. Yeah. Everything that happens to you, I think you think about it. Everything that's happened in your life has led you to this moment. And, you know, there's been bumps in the road. There's been good things. There's been bad things. But it's all led you to to where you are, where you're meant to be. Yeah, for sure. And I, and it's like, it's, it sounds crazy but I am like a huge believer. And if you just, if you take action and just go with your gut, I really am a believer that eventually, I hate to say, it's, this might sound corny and cheesy, but I really think that the universe or whatever anyone believes in God or anything will push you in the right direction. And if it's not meant to be like you just said, it won't happen. And if it is meant to be, it will happen. And, and it, it'll feel right. And yeah. that is why I just think that the Shark Tank thing just wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. I wasn't meant to go down that road for whatever reason. And I, I just think, I think there's a reasoning behind everything. I think the universe, if you just let it run its course, will, you know, bring you in the right direction. If you let it run its course and the big keys, you have to take action. So you gotta, you know, put it both together. But that's how I, that's how I think. And that's how I've always thought with it. Yeah, that's, that is such a good point. And it's kind of segueing into something that I wanted to talk about of putting your goals into action, right? Not just kind of floating around thinking you want to go after something like if someone's trying to start a YouTube channel or maybe they're trying to, you know, get into shape. If you think, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I'm going to do it. And you keep saying that, but you're not putting any action behind it. You have to, you have to put action and intention behind what it is that you want. But totally agree with you that, you know, everything kind of leads you to where you are. And if you just let go and trust the process, what's meant to be is always uh, going to come. So you mentioned earlier too about how you were diagnosed with diabetes back in 2018 did you say yeah so yeah it was, it was right at the end of december yeah 2018 so how did you how did you find out about that how has that been now so i um i went to florida in december and i put on shorts for the first time because i live you know i was in michigan and then i put on shorts and these shorts, I remember they were snug on me. They were tight. And then all of a sudden they just fell right off. They fell off because I, I lost so much weight. And I was um, like, that is just so bizarre. Why would I have lost? Anyway, I, I didn't change my diet. I wasn't working out anymore. And some, something didn't add up. So when I got back to Michigan, I went to the doctor and I lost like 35 pounds or something just ridiculous, like an absurd oh amount my of God. weight. And he, the doctor took my blood sugar. And the doctor, I like, I'm still mad at this doctor because he just like totally screwed me over. But he was like, there's like, there's no way you have diabetes. No one in your family has it, has it. And I have like a huge family. He was like, there's no way you have, you have type one diabetes. You're, you know, whatever. So I, I got tested and my blood sugar was at like 400 and it, and it should never go past like 120. So oh right away, God. you know, they know. Yeah. So they called me. 
And this is why I was so mad at the doctor. You know, they called me and said, hey, your results came in. Your blood sugar was at 400. So yeah, you know, you do have diabetes. And it was like December like 29th or 28th. It was December 28th, actually. It was right before the new year. And they were saying because it was the Friday before the new year. And they're saying because it's going to be a holiday weekend, just wait at home. And then after the new year, then you can come back and we can schedule an appointment and we can figure it all out. But I ended up calling my cousin, who's a doctor in the ER, and I told them my blood sugar was at 400 and my A1C was at like 13. And he just said, absolutely 100% go to the ER right now because I was in diabetic ketoacidosis. And that kills type 1 and type 2 diabetics every single day. Like it was super wow. dangerous for me not to go to the ER. So once I called him, I drove myself to the ER. And it, that was just a blur of just craziness. I was trying to process the whole thing. And by far the worst time in my entire life, like I was like just, just a blur for the next few months. And so, but I went there, they put me on daily insulin injections. I was in the hospital for like three or four days. And, um, you know, now fast forward to today, I'm, you know, back to normal. I'm still on daily insulin injections. You know, I still have to do it for the rest of my life, but I, I've done a handful of things, you know, with working out and diet that have just totally helped. But if you go back to, you know, when I got diagnosed, it was just the worst time my entire life. Oh my God. I'm sure that's, that must've been so scary. I can't even imagine. That's also really dangerously close too that. That doctor didn't, uh, catch that. Wow. Yeah, I was, I was so mad and I, I never, I always, I never went back to the doctor and he just, I don't know why he didn't tell me to go to the ER. You know, thank God nothing super bad happened with me. And I, I, you know, was able to get there before anything. I fainted or went to a coma or anything. But yeah, it was just, uh, you know, I mean, there's two different kinds of diabetes. There's type 1, type 2. And type 1, which is what I have, is extremely rare. It's usually in, in kids that are in like the 4 to 5, you know, years old. They're really young. And type 2 is usually people that are overweight and older. But I, I'm, I'm type 1. And I got it when I was 21. So it was, it was a really just a huge fluke that I got it. But it's the same thing. I think everything happens for a reason. I needed the wake up call. I needed to you know have a change of pace. And it was even thinking about it just like just puts me in my feelings because it was Aww. just insane. And I just, I mean, I was at the lowest of the lows of my entire life when that was going on. But now I look back and, uh, being diagnosed with diabetes, it made me do certain things in my life that I wouldn't have done if I, if I wouldn't have gotten diagnosed. So I really do think the same thing. Good things came out of it. It happened for a reason. And I'm not mad about it. I'm actually kind of happy it happened. And I think there's more stuff to come with me on my journey you know, with diabetes, helping other diabetics and things of that nature. So I think it was a positive thing that happened. But at the time, I mean, I'm telling you, I was like, and I thought I was done. Didn't think I was going to be able to work again or ever date or do anything. Like I was just miserable. Oh, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But I mean, I love your, I love your perspective on, on everything and how optimistic you are. And I totally agree with you that some of the, some of the darkest moments we have kind of bring us to where we are. And I know for me, some of my hardest times in my life, like last year I had I went through a really hard time and I, nobody really knows about it, but it was probably one of the hardest times of my life. And it kind of led me to where I am now of wanting to share, you know, the mind body connection and, you know, share that with people and hopefully help people. So everything, like I said, and like you said too, it kind of leads you to where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like when I got diagnosed with diabetes, um, I just, I mean, I, I, I really thought that was going to be the, I thought I was going to die to be honest. I don't you know. Now it's kind of funny looking back on it because with type one diabetes, you have to give yourself like three to five shots a day. You have to poke your finger like two to 10 times a day, depending on how stable your blood sugar is. And I was just miserable. And I got so miserable that I, I, I took a step back and I was like, what used to make me happy? And then that's when I realized like being, making videos, being on camera and reality TV, that is what makes me deep down inside happy. Like it really, you know, genuinely does. And so that's when I realized I should start this YouTube channel. And that is like 100% the reason why I started the channel. And if I wouldn't have gotten diabetes, 
I think I probably would have just been going along with my life. I wouldn't have really made a big change. And I still would just be, you know, sluggish, just going through life, not really living, just kind of trying to get through it. So in hindsight, I'm happy that it happened. And I think a lot of other great things are going to come out of it. But yeah, so there's good and bad. And, you know, I really think out of every bad, eventually a good comes out. Yeah. And that's, that's how you have to look at things, you know? And I, I think it's kind of when you, when you shift your perspective of it. And I say this all the time that things don't happen to us, but rather for us. And I think that that's so true because every, everything, a good thing, a bad thing, there's always a lesson to be learned from something. So if that's, if that's a perspective that you carry with you, I think it makes things a lot easier, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that I, you know, when you're going through a dark place, you got to keep that stuff in the back of your head. Like I used to just, I used to drive for hours listening to motivational, you know, uh, stuff, speeches, and just hours trying to just get through that rut for months. It went on and, uh, that stuff helps, you know, having that constant reminder of like you were saying, you know, stuff like that, it really does help you get through ruts. And it, it just, it's, it's something, you know, it really, 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 I don't know, for me, some people think it's cheesy, but for me, that kind of stuff, those kind of reminders really help change my life too, I thought. Yeah, no, they a thousand percent have for me too, because I think of the lowest points of my life when I started, you know, I'm a huge believer in the law of attraction. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but that's, that's literally how I, I live my life like to a T and I, I try to, you know, live that every single day with, with everything that I do. And I, I had discovered the secret. That's the big documentary back in high school. Um, this is actually a little bit of a tangent, but it's kind of interesting because it does relate a little bit. Um, but when I first discovered the secret, that's when I really started visualizing. And that was around the time that I got, uh, picked for American Idol. So I had visualized, and I think I, in some way maybe had manifested that experience, but then I reached a point of, you know, waiting after I made it through the first auditions and then, uh, getting sent to Hollywood, I got so obsessed with it and I was just like constantly festering over it and thinking about it. And I think I was just almost like preventing it from happening because I was just putting so much anxiety into wanting it so badly that I almost took it out of the way for myself. But that's exactly to a T how I was with Shark Tank. I would, I would literally, I got into spirituality, like the law of attraction type stuff. I, I've always known of manifesting because I kind of just grew up around it, you know, with family, friends and stuff. So ever since I was in like the seventh or sixth grade, I, I got really involved in that kind of stuff. This was, you know, man, just manifesting stuff, believe in the universe, yeah. stuff like that. And so when Shark Tank came, when I was a sophomore in high school, I was really invested in it. And I was just like, you know, I was obsessed. All I would ever do is think about, you know, when's the show going to air? What's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen to the business? All I would ever do is think about it. And same thing, I really think it just like, it, I just totally agree with that. I went through the, I went through a really similar situation when I, you know, was going on Shark Tank for sure. Yeah. It like, it consumes you entirely. I remember being in high school at the time and I, I stopped playing sports so that I could like get ready for, you know, being on the show and practicing. And I just, I went to an extreme, like way too much into it. And I think I just kind of kicked my own butt with that. It was, it was way too much obsessing over it. Yeah. So. I know we all need balance. It's like, I've obsessed over business for a lot of my life and I, I have an ob obsessive personality. It sucks. You know, I really do. I, I just go crazy in one direction, but I really think the, the, just the happiest people, they just have balance. They spend time with friends. They spend time with family. They work, they do, you know, so they got they do different things. Whereas there were times in my life we were around the shark tank thing from five in the morning to like 1030 at night, all I was doing was working and thinking about working and just, and I, I wasn't happy. And I was just, I was, it was just too consuming. It's I, you know, everyone has their own thing, but for me, that obsessive type personality like that, just, it doesn't benefit me. You know, when I, when I've gone down that road in the past. Yeah, I, I feel the same way because I have, like I said, I mean, the American Idol thing, it was the same situation. And I thought it was something that I wanted so bad. But now in hindsight, I'm like, man, I don't really know if that's what I wanted If because it was turning me into someone that I, I didn't like. Like, I didn't like who I became being so obsessed by it. Uh huh. I know when I was going really down the rabbit hole with my businesses, I kind of became a jerk and I was rude and even... You know, even now it's like my personality changed where I was always super serious. And now I'm just a goofball and, I, and that's how I am by nature. I just like to joke around and have fun. 
But when business, I was always strictly serious and it was ruining my personality, it was ruining who I was meant to be. And that is the kind of stuff that I really think why the universe or whoever God or whatever just said, no, we're not going to put, that, that's not going to happen. We're going to put you in a different direction because you, you know, you're happier when you're joking around, when you're hanging out, when you're being yourself. And, and myself is a crazy, loud, you know, joking around kind of guy. And in business, I was never able to really be that kind of a person. So. Yeah, it's, it's true. And it's the same thing. It's kind of like the universe or whatever, you know, I, I believe in the universe, higher power, whatever it might be, always will kind of, I think of it as if there's little puppies, you know, that are running around in a little cage and there's one that kind of like strays off a little bit. It's like the universe is like, no, 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 come back. Like this is where you're supposed to be. Um, and yeah, I, it was the same thing for me. Like I, as a child, I used to be so angry and just like upset and anxious all the time and just a lot of like dark emotions. And then once I kind of found the law of attraction, then that really helped me kind of get a handle on that and realize that, whoa, why am I so angry at the world? Like, come on, you know, get it together. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny how, how things like that shape us and bring us to where we are. And then I sort of rediscovered the law of attraction last year when I was going through kind of a rough patch. And then that's when it like really all clicked for me and kind of became apparent that I, I want to use my voice for something more than, you know, just what I was doing before. So that's why I wanted to start this up and get it going. And yeah, like we said, just going after it. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. I think, you know, if you're passionate about it and, and the, and the coolest thing with this social media stuff that and I haven't even mentioned is especially with your channel, mine kind of, but with your channel, especially you can really help people like mine. I do occasionally believe it or not have people reach out to me and say, because your videos, I'm happier now, which is just impossible for me to believe because I, all I do is just rant and rave. <laughs> and I'm not even, I'm not even talking about serious stuff, but for you, you're talking about really serious life-changing stuff, you know, and you'd be shocked by the amount of lives that you can change. And for me, I mean, that right there in itself is a reason to do it and to keep doing it and to enjoy it and to be passionate about it. And, and, and it's the same thing with my YouTube. It's like the thought of being able to even help one person be happier or not be depressed. It just, it just can't even wrap my mind around it because it's such funny content, but you know, if it makes people happy, it just makes the whole thing a million times better. Yeah. I mean, if the shoe fits, like you'd be surprised of, you know, the little things along the way that can cheer someone up. I mean, you even think about in your life, the little things that cheer you up, like watching reality TV and reacting to it, that helped you. And now it's helping someone else, which is, which is awesome. I know. Yeah. yeah. And like, I look back at my life and there's certain things that uh, I've, I've heard and I've listened to, like a lot of Jim Rohn. Do you ever listen to Jim Rohn? He's a really old motivational speaker. Not familiar. What's, check him what's out. his He's, deal? He's, he's good. He's an old school motivational speaker. He's okay. dead now, but he just, um, he was just an awesome guy. He had a really cool story and he just put a lot of stuff in perspective for me. And he's, he had some speeches on just how easy it is. If you're in America, like that was always his speech that like, if you're in America, it's so much easier than if you're in like a different country. And like, we're already like, you know, a thousand steps ahead of other people in different countries and we shouldn't be complaining. And, but, but his tone and his personality was so loud and cool. And just like little stuff like that, I've heard along the way changed my life forever. I mean, forever and ever and ever. And so you're totally right. There's the little things people can hear could, you know, change their life forever. Yeah, exactly. And you'll never know. And it might be something as silly as, you know, reacting to Rose and Ed, you know, doing something. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you really never know. So shifting gears a little bit, just because I'm, I'm kind of curious uh, in terms of diabetes and navigating that. So what do you do now in terms of your diet? Did you have to make any changes, your workouts, anything like that? Yeah, changed my whole life. So I eat a very strict low carb diet and I wouldn't recommend it to an average person that's not diabetic. But if you are diabetic, I would recommend trying it because it changed my life. I, for the first three months after I got diagnosed with diabetes, I went to the doctors at Mayo Clinic. I went to doctors in Michigan. I went to doctors in Florida. And they all just told me to eat as many carbs as I want and then take insulin. Because when you eat carbs, um, your blood sugar goes up. And then with most normal people that have functioning pancreases, their, you know, their pancreas will shoot out insulin and their blood sugar goes back down. 
But for me, my pancreas stopped working. So I have to give myself a shot and then that's how I get my insulin. Then that lowers my blood sugar. But it, it's a constant, you know, roller coaster uh, battle of your blood sugar going up when you eat carbs and then you're trying to lower it. And the whole goal is just to balance it. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. If it's too high, you can, you know, go into a coma. It's really bad stuff. And then if it's too low, you can faint and pass out. It's really, you know, just horrible. So you want to balance it. And the only way I've ever been able to balance it is eating a low carb diet. I eat a low carb, high protein diet. I do miss some carbs. I'm not going to lie. Like there's certain stuff like sweet potatoes and just like vegetables that have carbs. I miss. I still occasionally do eat some carbs like sweet potatoes. And I'll just give myself another shot or something. But for the most part, I eat just a very low carb diet, kind of like a keto diet. Okay. And for my blood sugar, it's just changed my life. My blood sugar readings are phenomenal now. And it's something I really don't have to worry about, knock on wood too much. And it's just um, it's great. So the low carb diet for the diet and then for exercise, that has just been in insane because most people don't realize that when you do cardio, your blood sugar actually goes down. And like I was saying earlier, if your blood sugar goes down too much too soon, you can pass out and faint. So you have to kind of keep candy and stuff on you. And it's just a really scary, you know, having a low blood sugar, you can only really understand and relate to it if you're a diabetic. And it's just a really scary thing. Like it used to freak me out. And it's, it's terrifying. You start shaking and you get, you know, you start sweating and, and feeling nervous. And so I would go to the gym and like poke my finger like three times while at the gym. Like before I'd, when I'd get there, I'd check. And then while I was there, I'd check. And after I'd leave. And so now when I work out, I just have to kind of know what my blood sugar is when I get there and you know how I'm feeling and what I ate. And there's just a lot of stuff I've learned along the way that it just, it comes with experience. And the unfortunate thing about diabetes is a lot of people's bodies are different. What works for me might not work for someone else. And it just kind of takes, you know, being able to test and experiment, trying it out, taking blood sugar logs and learning along the way, but exercise, without a doubt has been a gigantic thing along with the low carb diet on stabilizing my blood sugar. Yeah, that's good. And it's interesting because I do feel like it's not really a one size fits all approach. I've always, I mean, said that with diet, fitness, anything, something could work awesome. This person could be a vegan, they could be rocking it. And then this person's keto and that that's what works for them. But I do like your kind of inside out approach of, uh, adjusting your diet so that you don't have to rely so much on the insulin. I think that that's awesome that you kind of figured that out because that's huge. Well, I read a book called The Diabetic Diet by Dr. Bernstein. And this guy, he's an actual type one diabetic. He got diagnosed when he was like 10 years old. He went through the ringer of all these doctors just saying, eat carbs and take insulin. And that's what like 95% of doctors preach. And for some people, it could very easily work. But the low carb diet, the diet for me, it just changed my life forever. And it was just the greatest thing. You know, I'm happy I came across it because of that book. It worked for me. It might not work for everyone. It's definitely not a, you know, one size fits all. But for me, I feel great. I have tons of energy now. And, um, and honestly, I eat a lot less junk. Like when I told my doctor, I'm going to cut out carbs. He was saying, well, you know, what about the good carbs and whatever? And but I eat, I eat less like French fries and just junk and candy now before when I, when I wasn't diabetic. I'm not, you know, it wasn't like before I was eating like, you know, really healthy, whatever, fruits and stuff. I was just eating candy and junk and hamburgers. Now I just eat a lot of salads and vegetables and meat and I feel phenomenal. So I don't think I'm missing out on certain nutrients in my opinion, but I'm not a doctor. I don't have a slight, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. just for me experimenting, testing, and that's how I feel. Yeah. Hey, it works for you. Like I always preach intuitive eating. So kind of listening to your body and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. And that's how I found out that, um, I had a gluten sensitivity. So it's actually really interesting. I never used to have a problem with it. And then I studied abroad. I lived in Italy for five months, which was awesome. It was great experience. And I came home from that. And all of a sudden I noticed I had a really hard time, you know, digesting gluten. And I actually had chronic laryngitis for a couple months from it because it was like eroding my throat. Yeah, it was like this whole crazy thing. And I, you know, process of elimination quite literally found out that gluten was the culprit. And ever since I stopped eating gluten, I've noticed such a huge shift. And it's been almost, I think, three years now since I've gone gluten free. And it, it works for me. But like I said, it's the same thing. 
works for me, but it might not work for, you know, somebody else. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I, I, I preach the low carb diet. I wish more diabetics would try it, would just give it a shot for a couple of months or two. I think the results will speak for themselves. And diabetes is really a disease where if your blood sugar is too high for too long, you will eventually have to get your, your feet you know, both your feet, your, you know, all of these body parts amputated, you can go blind, it, it, your heart gets all screwed up. It's a horrible thing if your blood sugar is too high. And that's why I say, if you want to live longer, I mean, it really is a life or death thing over time. If you want to live longer, you should give it a shot because eating junk, like whatever, you know, that, that is filled with carbs, like French fries and candy, it's just not worth it. You know, if, if you can eat junk like that and take insulin and balance your blood sugar, it's really difficult. But if you can do it, you know, great for you, but most people can't. And that's why I really, 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 really preach, especially to type two diabetics, give it a shot, try it out. And I, I, I make all these alternative recipes with low carb ingredients. Like I make a low carb pizza, I make low carb pancakes, a ton of other foods. And that's an industry, you know, when we go back to the business stuff that I would actually like to explore in the future because I'm so passionate about it. It works for me. It's foods I can actually eat. And I know it's going to really help people. So that's something I kind of, you know, that I think diabetes also kind of, you know, brought into my life that I might possibly explore in the future too. But the low carb diet, I'm telling you guys, if anyone's a diabetic, 100% worth giving it a shot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, give it a try. And if it works for you, cool. If it doesn't, then fine. But I think you're onto something there because if you think about now, even I even think about 10 years ago, how gluten free stuff, there really wasn't even that many options for people. But keto now is is growing into a huge business. And so is just low carb in general. That's such a that's such a space that's so prominent right now that I think you could really enter and and make a difference in. And so many people would, whether they're diabetic or they just want to follow a low carb diet, I think that they would they would get on board with that for sure. I know I would, too, because I've been trying to go low carb recently and I definitely feel a difference. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's something I'm considering, something I'm thinking about doing. I, I see my problem is I love, I absolutely love like 60% of me loves this kind of stuff, video, making videos, being on camera and the reality gossip stuff. But 35, 40% of me still really does love business. I just, I really enjoy entrepreneurship. I love making products and inventing things. Like I really do enjoy it. So I, I'm extremely fulfilled from YouTube. But there's still a part of me, it's like, God, I do kind of somewhat miss being around and involved in businesses. So I'm in the middle in the mix of a couple different things. I think combining the business side and the entertainment video side together can really, you know, have me be on a you know, fulfilling path, I think. So I'm, I'm considering it. I'm actually kind of trying to talk to some manufacturers and price it out if I was to maybe make something. Yeah, there you go. And I think if there's a will, there's a way. If you want to, if you have something like... You can combine them. They don't have to be, you know, totally separate entities. I think you could combine them. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Very cool. So would you have any other tips uh, just in general for anybody maybe who's diabetic, who's watching in terms of kind of navigating that in workouts? You know, um, exercise, walking is the greatest thing to lower your blood sugar. For me, I'll eat certain foods and just random specific foods will raise my blood sugar. Like people always say that popcorn is a great food for diabetics. But with me, if I had a couple pieces of popcorn, my blood sugar skyrockets. So, in, and then it's like at that point, I'll need to either take insulin or go do cardio to lower my blood sugar. And nine times out of 10, I'll actually go do cardio because it's more of a controlled um, way to lower your blood sugar, honestly, because insulin if you give yourself a shot of insulin, it, you know, not all of it can go in your bloodstream. And it, there, it, it's kind of just a crapshoot, honestly, like, it, it, you know, trying to guess and do the math on how much your blood sugar will go down. So my advice is do more cardio. Walking is your best friend. Walking is amazing. Speed walking is just an unbelievable way. Biking, you know, just casual biking is a great way to slowly throughout the day, lower your blood sugar to have safe and stable blood sugars. And I, yeah, I would just stay fit. I, I, you know, when you get more into working out really hard, that is more difficult. I'm not going to lie, but it's totally possible. There's type one and type two diabetics that do unbelievable marathons and crazy things, you know, so it's definitely possible, but you just have to keep a close eye on your blood sugar. And the other thing is always, always, always keep a blood sugar glucose meter on you and always 
um, you know, keep sugar on you of some sort, fast acting sugar, whether it's glucose tablets or gummies, that, that should be an obvious stuff. But I, I've met so many diabetics that don't because they think, they think they're experts or whatever. And then they'll have really close call situations. And it's like, just keep, I keep a thing of sugar and a glucose tablet in my pocket at all times. And I usually keep my monitor really close. And now I wear a freestyle Libre. I don't know if you can see that, but I wear, oh, yeah. I wear a freestyle Libre on my arm. So all I gotta do is scan my phone and my blood sugar reading comes on my phone. And it's like, oh, wow, that's cool. A little, little bit pricey, but it's just, you know, it's worth it 100%. So it's a little stuff like that. It just, it can change your life. I mean, it changed mine at least. So fitness, getting yeah. a freestyle Libre for sure changed my life. And then eating low carb. Yeah, that's, that's it. And it's also very, it's very much a holistic approach. Like you're doing everything that's kind of serving you well, you know, you're adjusting your diet, getting active, getting moving and even walking too for anyone. People sleep on walking. I don't know why it's the best form of exercise. It's free. You can do it anywhere. It's just, it's awesome. It's fun. Yeah. Legs out, you feel better. It's not really tiring, you know, but it helps your body. I mean, for anyone, it's just a great way to work out. I love walking and I was walking a lot during, uh, you know, quarantine and everything, you know, so it's a, it's a great thing, especially now in summer. It's a great thing. Just yeah. To I love walking. I go for, I try to go for sunset walks like every day if I can, even if I can't do a sunset walk just at some point, it just feels good to just, like you said, stretch your legs, get some fresh air too. Fresh air is super underrated, especially in a time right now. If you can get outside, breathe that fresh air in, get that sunlight. Yeah. That's We're like right plants. We need it. <laughs> yeah. Right when I got sick, you know, everything going on, that, that was the biggest thing. Just to go outside and walk, get the fresh air, breathe the fresh air. And I don't even know if it was just psychological, but I just, I felt better. I felt like I was breathing better. Maybe it was in my head. I don't know. But I just, I, something about that. I, I, I've always loved, you know, walking, being outside. Just, I feel better, you know. All right. Well, that kind of wraps everything up today. Thank you so much, Max, for coming on. I miss you. I'm glad we got to kind of connect here. This was a lot of fun. I miss you too. We all have to get together soon. We need to have yeah. a party or something, meet in the middle or something and all of us get together. So yeah. I miss you too. And I miss everyone else, all of our other yeah. <laughs> large friend group. So I miss everyone. And yeah. I, you know, I was catching up. We need to do it again sometime soon. And I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. So uh, for anyone listening or watching, uh, where can they find you? YouTube, any kind of websites, Instagram? Uh, it's just the Celeb Talk Guy. The Celeb Talk Guy all the way through YouTube. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I got a podcast now on Apple, you know, iTunes. And uh, yeah, that, that's where I post content. So check it out. You know, if you want the best celebrity in reality TV gossip, you know, go to the Celeb Talk Guy and check it out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Thank you so much for coming on and anybody listening, uh, subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on future episodes if you're watching this. If you're not watching this and you're listening to it, uh, you can also find me on YouTube and I'll leave the link in the description for you as well. So I hope you all enjoyed today. Max, thank you so much. Thank you.